Welcome to the Bernadette Jackson podcast, where we are redefining how the world views women with daddy issues by discussing topics, sharing stories, and gaining insight, all from the perspective of a fatherless daughter. I'm your host, Bernadette, the creator of Her Way. Today, we have another story time episode where I highlight the stories of fatherless daughters. We talk about how fatherlessness has affected them, but more importantly, how they have been able to get past that pain. Today we have story time with Lydia. Lydia Martin Jackson is a wife, mother, and RN by trade. She is currently transitioning into the role of an encouragement strategist and coach. As a survivor of childhood trauma, she has channeled the energy and feelings of guilt, hopelessness, and anger to ones of forgiveness, hope, and love, and aspires to be an inspiration for others who have suffered similar situations to do the same. Her father died at an early age, and her mother remarried a man that she never really developed a relationship with. As a result, she saw her mother at the forefront of family responsibility. These things caused her to feel the need to take the lead in all areas of her life, including relationships. By doing so, she has been very successful in some situations while struggling to find balance in others. Lydia, it is a pleasure to have you on. I am excited that you're here. How are you feeling? Thank you, Bernadette. I am, I'm happy to be here. Um, thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm really happy that you're here. I know that this conversation is going to be great. I'm excited. How you doing? I feel good. Um, I feel blessed. It's a beautiful Monday morning. Um, I just feel good. I really, um, I'm kind of excited to have this conversation too because it's really it really caused me to think about the impact of things and how it affects my current relationship, you know, with my husband, with my children, just it's a, it's definitely a very important topic to discuss. So I'm excited. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Lately, I've been loving to ask the question, what has been your favorite pandemic purchase? So is there something that you had that you loved? <laughs> Listen, um, I live on Amazon. Like I'm, oh. listen, we get a we get a box every day. Um, my yeah. favorite pandemic purchase. I don't really have a favorite right now. Like that's an on the spot question. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm not a I'm not really an impulse buyer for like. Uh-huh things i'm an impulse buyer for stuff for my family like for my house so i don't really like shop for like shoes and clothes a lot as much as i shop for groceries um yeah i have definitely discovered hello fresh though okay hello Ooh. fresh i'll take hello okay. fresh as my favorite because the food is already ready all you got to do is pull it out chop it up and cook it up you don't have to think about it so i'm gonna go with hello fresh that's have you good. tried it no, actually, I haven't tried it. And I've been hearing a lot of good things about it lately. And I've been seeing, like, some YouTube videos about how it works. And I'm like, huh, this might be something. But I know that they have a vegan version of this. And I think it's called, like, Purple mm-hmm. Carrot that I've mm-hmm. been thinking about trying. So I might actually give one of these boxes a whirl and see how I like it. Yeah. Are you vegan? Yes, I am vegan. Oh, okay. I actually think that, uh, oh, maybe it's vegetarian. I was going to say, I think Hello Fresh has a... But I think it's vegetarian. I don't think it's vegan. Yeah, I think that it's vegetarian too because I saw a couple of videos with people um, sharing the vegetarian box and I was like, this stuff looks good. If I was a vegetarian, I would definitely try it for sure. It's definitely, it definitely has a lot of flavor. I'm not a vegetarian. I love meat. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I definitely, um, if you get an opportunity to check it out, I definitely suggest you do. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm definitely going to do it. Yeah. Any shows that you've been binge watching? Huh, so funny, like I literally, my husband and I literally, somebody turned us on the Game of Thrones. Um, mm. We kept hearing about it, kept hearing about it. I did everything I could not to watch it. <laughs> and then we finished all eight seasons in two weeks. Uh-huh. So I guess that's considered a serious binge uh, if you watch Game of Thrones. Have you watched it? I have actually seen maybe the first five or six episodes in season one. And I'll say that I actually liked it, but 
because my mind is so all over the place, if there's some new show that comes out that I want to see even more, I'm off of this thing that I'm on. And I'm like, let me check out this over here. And then right. I'm like, oh, wait, there's this new show over here. So I'm all over the place. And then I'll forget what I started watching if mm -hmm. it doesn't draw me in enough. Mm -hmm. And I'll just have like, you know, seasons unfinished sitting there in my queue for a long time. Dude, that's not even how I operate, honey. I don't like to watch TV, period, because if I start something, I got to finish it. Like, a movie, a series, like, I probably watched the whole, uh, it's this it's this show on um, Netflix called, uh, what is that show, Lord? It's about demons and the black guy. What is, I can't think oh, of it. Um, is Lucifer? it evil? evil? No, not evil. I think it's called I know Evil. Oh, I think I think it's like the Omen show, like some good Omen, something like that. Is it something? It's something about yeah, Omen, but mm. I can't think of what it was. But it was so good, I watched the whole season in one day. Oh wow! Um, I can't think of what it was now. I have to. I have to get back to you on that. But oh yeah, no, that's I, fun. <laughs> I try not to watch a lot of TV because I don't know how to stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what? I <laughs> that's really something I struggle with, and I decided. I want to say maybe about a week ago that I was going to do a fast. And the thing that I was fasting from is right. um, social media and like TV and um, radio and stuff. And right. I'm telling you, just with doing that, it really has helped me to be so much more focused on the things that I need to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And it's really like giving me the space to work through some things that I needed to get clarity around. So it's been really helpful. Yeah. So I think going forward, I may, you know, definitely have to restructure how I want to do things. But yeah, I am really a person because I'm so creative. I really get into like different shows and stuff. And mm -hmm. it's just like a source of um, just relaxation and just an outlet from all of the things that I do in a day. But it has its limits, which yeah. I'm beginning to understand. Yeah, it's funny you say that. Like, I'm not a creative. I'm very literal. So I sit there and I'm like watching TV and I'm like, you watching these people live out their dreams, but what about your dreams though? Mm, like mm -hmm. you watching these, you helping these people get paid, but how you getting paid though? Like, what are you doing with your time? It's that you sitting here supporting them. What about you? So I struggle right. with TV because I always feel like I'm wasting time when I watch it, even though I love it. It's like kind of like a guilty pleasure. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, I think, you know, that's definitely something to consider. And then it's all about balance as well, you know? Like, it's totally fine to schedule something that you know maybe is a stress relief or a guilty pleasure, especially when you need it. Yeah. So, you know, I, it's definitely something to consider. Right. So in your intro, you know, you talked about your father passing away and your mom remarrying. When did you come to the awareness that you are a fatherless daughter? Um. So my parents actually separated when I was about three. Um, we... I was born in Chicago. My mom's from Arkansas. So we moved back to Arkansas. Um, you know, I guess when I was around three, so I really don't have very much memory of it mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. But I knew that my mom and my dad were separated. Um, but my mom also was dating her now husband at the time. Mm -hmm. And he and I really never really clicked because I felt like he was taking my mom away from me yeah um so when I turned she married a man who I really she this my stepdad is actually her third husband she had a second husband but he was really short term but I really liked him he and I got along really well we had a, mm -hmm. an established relationship he made me feel loved and cared about I might have been four with him mm -hmm. um but then my mom started dating her now husband and he and I just never we just never it just never like even when I was little we didn't it was never the three of us it was always me and my mom or him and my mom you know okay. um, she would be gone a lot I would spend a lot of time like with cousins and stuff and um that left a lot of opportunities for things to happen mm -hmm. because my mom wasn't there um right. So, I guess to answer your question specifically, um, my dad 
passed away when I was seven. They buried him on my eighth birthday. Oh, wow. And, but I don't ever remember living with him. I just remember spending the summer with him before he actually passed away. Okay. Um, so I don't really ever really remember having a father mm-hmm. per se, mm-hmm. like somebody in my house. Um, my mom's husband was there, but I, again, I don't really, they dated until I was 16 before they got married, but they had been together that entire time. So I pretty much feel like I've generally been fatherless my whole life, if that makes sense. Okay. Yes, yeah. it does. I, I definitely get that. Yeah. And um, you say that you watched your mom take on most of the responsibility in your family and that it caused you to feel that you needed to also lead in every situation. Can you talk about some of the ways that you struggled as a result of that? Um. So just seeing my mom, even though her husband was there, whenever discussions about bills or food or... Um, like any type of family issues would come about about my sister. She also lived with us. She, um, she's nine years older than me Mm -hmm. and she has, she had three children. Well, she has five now, but at the time she had kids. So my mom would always help her. Like my mom took me places. She did things with me. Like it was never my stepdad doing things with me or spending time with me or, putting money in my hand or like I can think of one or two instances where he actually like he took me to my debutante dance um and he like one time he let me drive his car and then it was just that one time um I don't really like just by seeing my mom always in control always Mm -hmm. leading um always being the one to handle the bills, to pay, to handle the responsibilities. When cars broke down, she was the one driving the car to the shop. Like, just to see her always handling business made me feel like I was the one who needed to be able to handle business. And she always used to tell me, you need to be able to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to depend on a man for nothing. You need to be able to take care of yourself. So I literally took that as I need to be able to take care of myself because I'm literal. So I made it a point to make sure that I secured my safety, my future by doing the things I needed to do to make sure that I was okay. Yeah. And it sounds like what you were saying is that um, your stepdad really was not the covering that he really should have been in that relationship. Your mom was more so the one that covered you the way um, yeah. it's biblically speak, um, spoken, you know, like okay. the Bible talks about the man being the head of the household and the covering for his family, but your mom was that. So you felt that you needed to also be that as well. Yeah. Is that yeah. what I'm understanding? Okay. Yeah. So and like he would, like, it would be like, I'm saying like a lot. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. Instances would be, she would say that he was doing things and he was helping with things, but I never saw it. So I don't mm-hmm. know. I can't right. speak to what they did behind closed doors and I'm not speaking down on him. I just right. never saw it. So mm-hmm. my interpretation of how things went was my mom was taking care of business. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like it really is all about our perspective on things as well. Anyway, I mean, if nothing has ever been corrected or, you know, we've never been shown evidence of something different, then it's all about how we perceive the situation. Right. How would you say that uh, some of that has carried over into your marriage and how you treat things or maybe how you allow your husband to cover you or trusting yeah. him to be that person for you? Like, how is that? Yeah. How is that from there? So trusting him to do it because mm-hmm. I'm so used to just getting it done. I we've been together for three for three years now, and it has been a constant struggle for me to not be so. He, I'm very, I'm very forward. He's very laid back. Mm-hmm. So things that I need to immediately, I feel need to be immediately done. He doesn't necessarily always feel that way. Right. So it has been a process for me to not try to take so much control in the situation and allow him the space and opportunity to handle things. Now I do handle like, as far as like the actual paying of bills and things like that. But as far as like money and stuff, it's a joint thing, Mm -hmm. but I would rather do it the way I want to do it. And that's just because I'm used to handling things the way that I handle them. 
Right. But one thing that I've really learned in my relationship with my husband is that there is more than one correct way to do things. Yes. Um, and it's two of us. It's not just me. Like I'm not alone. We are a partner. We're a partnership. We're a team. So I actually stop a lot of times and not necessarily ask him, but ask him what he thinks about something. How does he feel? How long does he think he needs before he wants me to move forward? Because he is a strong man. He's very quiet and reserved, but he's still really strong. Yeah. So I have to respect that about him. And I do respect that about him. And so it's been a process, me learning how to just not jump up. And if something happens, just go take care of it versus waiting and talking to my husband about it. Right, right. And even giving him the opportunity to lead in that area because, you know, it feels nice. It feels nice when we're taken care of and, you know, allowing him to do that. I think um, would really make you feel loved in a way that you might have not have been able to see growing up with your stepfather or with your dad. So, you know, that's definitely something. Um, I remember the moment that I decided that I had had enough of experiencing like failed relationships and I wanted more. And I like mm-hmm. to call that my coming to Jesus moment. So mm-hmm. when did you decide that enough was enough and that you didn't want to be defined by your father loss anymore? And just like seeing how your mother was in relationships and you wanted things to be different for you. What, what was that like for you? Actually, probably when I started dating my husband. Hmm. I saw how good of a man he was. I saw how passionate he was, how actually um, in touch with his emotions he was. Um, And I knew that I wanted, this is the kind of man that I want to be with. Um, I knew that I had been so dominant for so long And I know that it was the cause of many of my failed relationships because I didn't know how to sit back and wait. Like I didn't stop. I was very forceful um, because I wanted what I wanted when I wanted it. Yeah. But when I meet this man who's not like any of those other people, who's not afraid to show his love and how he feels. And I knew I didn't want to mess that up. Mm -hmm. So I knew I needed to stop and take the time to learn how to be more patient and not carry over into my marriage all the things that I had seen because trying to literally handle my business and then take care of a grown man. Listen, I'm not a grown man. I'm a grown woman and I can't take care of a grown man's business. That's what a grown man does. And so I struggled with that knowing that I can't do that. But then when I met my husband, I knew that that's not what I wanted. I needed to, I needed to learn how to calm down Mm -hmm. and just wait a minute and talk to him and let him lead and give him the space to see if he's actually going to do it Yeah. before I make the assumption that he's not going to do it and just run out and do it. So that's one thing um, my moment had to be when I got with him and I knew I didn't want to lose him. Yeah, that, that sounds good. And it, it's, it sounds as if, You know, you definitely had an awareness there that there were things that you needed to change. Mm -hmm. And um, in order for this relationship to to be the relationship, you know, there were definitely some things that needed to to um, be different. So what would you say was the first thing that you did after you discovered that, you know, there were things that you need to do differently? (laughs) He used to tell me, (laughs) he's going to kill me when he hear this episode. (laughs) He used to tell me, you know, you won't even give me a chance. Like, give me a chance. Let me show you. Like, let me show you. Let me show you I love you. Let me show you I'm going to do it. Like, give me a chance to do it. And so I had to learn how to sit on my hands. Mm. Um, That's, that's literal and metaphorical um yeah (laughs) i had to learn how to sit on my hands i had to just the first thing i did was just wait like and i would be like okay so how long do you think you need for 
like how long do you want me to wait before I bring this up again or yeah. how long do you think you need to address this like I started asking him how long did he think he needed and initially he ain't like it he was like stop <laughs> asking me that and then he was like okay I think I need you know two weeks give me this much time let me see and so I would say okay so I would be walking around secretly handling it to have uh-huh. ready to go in two weeks just in case he didn't do what he said he was gonna do <laughs> but then two weeks came and he did it yeah. you know what I mean so I was like okay all right so mm-hmm. the first time that he said he was gonna do something and I gave him the space to do it and then he did it it was reassuring and comforting for me like okay yeah. all right okay calm your butt down okay. <laughs> yeah yeah I definitely get that. It's like, you know, you give them the space to Mm -hmm. do what they say they want to do. At the same time, you're apprehensive about trusting Mm -hmm. that they're going to do what they say they're going to do. So it's like that balancing act, you know, and uh, it can be hard sometimes for us, like, you know, as fatherless daughters, but the more we um, just give a little bit, and mm-hmm. allow somebody the space to do what they say they're going to do and they show up for us in the way that they said they were going to show up you mm-hmm. know it makes the trusting them with you know our heart and just with our yeah. personhood so much easier so yeah i definitely much better. oh yeah i definitely get that i definitely get that and it, it helps you break down your walls too because you're not so you so used to just doing it on your own you not you right. really haven't seen how it works Mm-hmm. a man to really take care of a woman but then you see it and then like fortunately for me and his in our situation like his dad takes really good care of his mom they've been married for like 40 years almost he takes really good care of his mom you know mm-hmm. and so i know that he knows what it is that he's supposed to do you know right. what i mean and so every time that he does something it makes it a little bit easier to let him do those things yeah definitely what's one thing that you would tell your younger self now that you've gone gone through some healing um that it's okay you don't know everything and you don't have to front like you do you don't have to act as though you got it all figured out because nobody does um and it's okay that you don't know and to show people that you don't know that it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because father loss is trauma that affects us relationally, mm-hmm. there are areas of our healing that will happen only in healthy relationships. So mm-hmm. how has your current relationship helped you to heal or helped you on your healing journey? Um, it helps me to know that the one's perception that I had of men in relationships is not necessarily the true perception. Mm -hmm. Um, It has allowed me to, yeah, that's the biggest thing to know that the perception that I had, I once had of men and how they do things. um, Most men um, is not necessarily true that, men do want to lead and men do want to love and men do want to support um and because i didn't see that i didn't know if that was real or even how to understand that but i am really grateful and appreciative that that i was able that i'm able to experience this kind of support and this kind of love from a man because i never thought i would you know yeah, I definitely get that. How would you say that your lived experience affects what you do now in terms of your line of work, how you parent, or in any other way? So, I'm a girl mom. Um, I have a two-year-old daughter. Um, and then our stepdaughter, my bonus baby. Mm-hmm. I like to call her my bonus baby. She's 13. She also lives with us. Um it I try to stand back and let him be in the forefront in a lot of things when it comes to them 
Yeah. Because I want them to know that their dad loves them and that their dad is present and that their dad supports them. Um, and that they don't got just some bossy mama, some bossy stepmama, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. Definitely in my parents and I try to, what's the word, work with, be a, I try to make sure that I'm a team player. Yeah. And I want him to feel like he's the dad, like he's the head, like he's, excuse me, like he's the one who leads our family because he is. Um, mm -hmm. And I try to make sure that I let the girls see that. Because I don't want them to feel like they have to take on roles and responsibilities that really aren't designed for them. Right. I mean, I know it's a new way of thinking and it's no gender roles, this and that. But as women, we want to feel protected. We want to feel secure. We want to feel safe. We want to feel supported. And as men, they want to feel respected. They want to be loved. They want to be treated like as the head. They want to, they want to be followed. They want you to know that they will take care of you and they want to provide like they that's what they want to do yeah so i try to make sure my girls get that dynamic from us because i want them to grow up knowing this is just what it is mm -hmm. um and that's okay so to ex to know that this is just the minimum expectation you know right right yeah yeah that's good um i really feel like um making sure that they get to see that is yeah. definitely going to change the dynamic of how they are in relationships going forward. So now it's not even a situation where we feel like the the same generational curses have to be continued. It right. can stop with us because now we're intentional about how we parent, about who we are in relationship with, who we allow in our space. So yeah, that's that's really good. Yeah. I like to end all of my interviews with Bernadette's Quick Five. It's a five minute segment where you answer five questions and I give you about five seconds to think about what your responses are. There's no wrong answers. So the first thing that comes to your mind, you can tell me. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> all right. What's one thing you think people get wrong about fatherless daughters? that we are bossy and that we don't want anybody to lead us, that we just want to do what we want to do. And we don't, we don't want that love or affection, but secretly that's exactly what we want. Exactly. What is one thing you believe that you're better at because you're a fatherless daughter? Um, I think I'm better at being able to take care of myself and manage stressful situations. Um, I had to learn how to grow up quick and I had to learn how to protect myself quickly. Um, and I think that's one thing that I guess it's a strength depending mm -hmm. on how you look at it. Um, to me, it's a strength because I was able to become more, um, it made me resilient in a lot of unpleasant situations. So yeah. um, that's good. Uh, what is one book that you've read that you really feel has improved your relationships with others? Mm. Probably how to win friends and influence people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because it just teach you how to, it just teach you how to, how to communicate, how to relation with people. And it's not necessarily you trying to get over on people, but you do want to establish relationships and you do want to have solid connections. So, and you do want people on your side, like you don't want to be the person out. You want to be the person on the end. It's, we all do. So yeah, of course. I feel like that is a book that's really worth reading. Yeah, for that. What would you like to be known or remembered for? Whenever somebody leaves my presence, I always want them to feel like they were better because they were around me, because they got to know me. Um, I want them to feel like I always made them feel like they were seen and like they were heard, um, like they were respected and like they were safe. Yeah, I like that a lot. I mean, that safety part is yeah. <laughs> so crucial to us. Safety is crazy. People oh, yeah. underestimate 
people underestimate how important it is to feel safe. Yes, they yeah. absolutely do. And then a lot of times people don't even realize that they've been in survival mode so long that the relationship that they're in is not even safe. And they safe. have just been, right, so conditioned to being in survival mode and always being in a high stress situation that they don't know what it feels like to even be in the safety of like somebody covering you. So Girl, that, listen, man. <laughs> it's so funny, just like real quick, like with my husband, I feel safe. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like, like I, I am safe. I yeah. can be who I am. I mean, don't get me wrong, we disagree, but there's never a point where I feel like I can't do this with him. Like yeah. I, who I am is okay. I don't have to change. I and it to be able to just be myself and to be able to know that I'm gonna be loved regardless. Like yeah, that uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's not something that, especially from a man. Like my mom and my sister. Yeah, but from a man, like mm-hmm. that I can share my deepest, darkest fears and secrets with, and I know he's not gonna judge me. Like yeah, he's still gonna love me anyway. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah that part yeah. like the underestimate the underestimating of the safeness like yes yeah um, and this is exactly what um christ told husbands to do for their wives to begin with you know yeah. like that's the yeah. type of safe space that your husband is supposed to create for you in relationships yeah. that is exactly what it meant when he said that husbands are supposed to love their wives the way Christ loves the church, like offering that same space for you to come to him completely and authentically yourself and know that there's not going to be any judgment, any shame or any rejection. Like, you know, that is the level of safety that fatherless daughters always want. But a lot of times yeah. we have to articulate, you know, yeah. and no, nor do we know what we're looking for because we've never right. seen it. So we don't right. know. If it's sitting in our face, we don't know what to do with it. We like, exactly. why are you being so nice? What's wrong with you? You know what I mean? You know? Yeah. We don't trust it. Like you just want you want some. What's mm-hmm. up? Yeah. You know, but when it's when it may genuinely not even be that. So it may it's genuinely so somebody just want to treat you right or be good to you, but we don't know how they look. We don't know what to expect. Like we don't know how to. We don't know how to just sit down and let that be what it is. Like we always expect something attached to it. You know what I yes. mean? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And then the last thing is to fill in the blank. My name is blank, and my father laws does not define me because. My name is Lydia Jackson, and my father laws does not define me because I am still a child of God. And he still loved me enough to give me love on this earth. And for that, I am forever grateful. I love that. Yes, indeed. Lydia, I really enjoyed talking to you. Where can people find you? Um, yeah, so right now I just got a my Instagram page is where I am the most. It's authentically underscore inspire on Instagram or Lydia Martin Jackson on Facebook. Um yeah, that's that's where I'm at most of the time, but mostly on Instagram, authentically underscore expire, authentically underscore inspire. Excuse me. No problem. I love it. I so enjoyed this, and I know that my audience is going to enjoy it too. This was really great, Lydia. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. This was good. Lydia was such a amazing person to have on my podcast because she was just so authentic and just so open with her story and her thoughts and how she has been able to really triumph from where she started and what she saw growing up to the loving relationship that she has now. And it was such a joy having the conversation with her. So again, I just wanted to let you guys know that Lydia's Instagram is authentically underscore inspire. And you can find her on IG as she is building her business. I cannot wait to see what she does 
because she already is so authentic and she already has a story that's really inspiring. So I am looking out to see everything that she is coming out with. As always, I thank you for joining me in this podcast. And if you have any questions or if you have any podcast suggestions, you can leave them at BernadetteJackson.com forward slash help. And before I go, I just want to remind you that you deserve amazing relationships. I'll see you on the next one.